Hello, welcome to today's devotion. We are in the Gospel of Luke. We're looking at chapter 18, specifically verses 35 through 43. This concludes, or will conclude, this chapter. As we go into the Word, I invite you to pray with me. Thank you, Father, for your truth. It is your truth that sets us free. And as your word says, whom the Son sets free, we are free indeed. And so um, as we go into your word, we pray that you speak to us as only you can and reveal your truth to us, that we may follow you, that we may know you, that we may order our lives according to your will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 35 begins uh, as, with the following. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the road begging. Hearing a crowd passing by, he inquired, what was happening. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, they told him. So he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those in front told him to keep quiet. But he kept crying out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and commanded that he be brought to him. When he came closer, he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, he said, I want to see. Receive your sight, Jesus told him. Your faith has saved you. Instantly he could see and he began to follow him, glorifying God. All the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Now, this is not the first time that Jesus does a miracle. And it's not the first time that Jesus heals someone, which is why, which with regards to his ministry and what has taken place, which is why the man who was blind in hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth began to cry out. It wasn't a, a, a mediocre cry, if you will. It wasn't a subtle cry. It was a cry of desperation because the man at some point in time had heard of the various miracles that Jesus was doing and had done. And as such, out of his desperation, cried out to him. The part, or there's a lot to be gleaned spiritually from this encounter, but what I'd like to focus on in this moment is verse 42 where Jesus says, receive your sight. Everything in Christ that are gifts, and there are many gifts, we receive. I'd like to talk about what that means. When Jesus goes in the Gospel of John and is going through Samaria, he stops in a town called Sychar, and there is a Samaritan woman that comes to draw water from a well that Jesus is sitting next to. And he asks her, it's about noon, it's hot, and he asks her, will you give me some water? And her immediate response is, looking at the situation that he's Jew and she's a Samaritan and the animosity that the, 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 the animosity that has been cultivated for, for many, many years, many centuries, many generations, the hatred that they had for one another. She comments on by saying, how can you, a Jew, ask me for a drink? And Jesus replies to her. This is, by the way, in the fourth chapter of John. 
If you knew the gift of God, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now that particular term for gift is only used that word one time, and that's in that particular gospel. But there are many Greek words that we translate as gift because God through Christ is giving gifts, spiritual, that manifest themselves physically. And this is important to understand because the way that we experience Christ the way that we experience God through Christ, our Father through Christ, the way that we experience the Spirit is through receiving. It's not something that we earn or it's not something that we work toward and receive as something that is of merit then it would not be a gift. It would be a wage. I can receive my wages because I'm owed my wages. That's not a gift. A gift is something that we receive. And it is very difficult in our culture to understand that sometimes with regards to God because we are so used to the paradigm of receiving something by way of merit. You maybe have heard the, the phrase, oh, they're a good Christian. And that oftentimes refers to a merit-based system, that they have somehow performed better than others have performed. And what we see happening here is in verse 41, First of all, going back to verse 40, Jesus stops when he hears the man and commands that he be brought to him. So Jesus hears the cry of the desperate. Jesus hears the cry of those who cannot earn anything. They cannot come to Jesus and say, I'm based on what I've done. I'm requesting that you do this for me. Now that doesn't mean that God doesn't reward. He does. There's many times in scriptures that we are reminded that God rewards those who seek him and earnestly desire to know him. He is a God that rewards that. But that's different than receiving the supernatural grace that God, that Jesus gives us. And this is an aspect of his grace that he is pouring out. The word grace in Greek is charis. It means, or we translate it, God's unmerited favor. You can't earn it. You can't work it. Just like with this man, you, there's nothing that he can do to earn it. It's not only God's favor to those who do not deserve it. It's also God's favor to those who are the ill-deserved, that deserve actual punishment, if you will, or the consequences of their sin. So grace, the gift of God, comes to those who in desperation cry out to God. And it's not based on anything that they can earn. Now, that word charis is a general noun. It means God's unmerited favor. When it becomes specific, when it becomes a noun that is very specific in terms of a gift, they put an M-A on the end of that word, chariz or charisma, charisma. And that's a gift, a specific gift. And through Christ, we receive, as Paul says, many spiritual 
gifts, but they manifest themselves. To my account, there's roughly 25 that's recorded in the scriptures. I'm not going to get into that now. But the point being is that this man is receiving a charisma, a gift. And one of the spiritual gifts that come through Christ and is, and is administered by the Spirit of God is healing. This healing is one of the many gifts that God gives. The other gift, or I should say another gift that God gives from the same spirit is faith. And so this man received faith, as Jesus says in 42, receive your sight. That's the gift. He's receiving it. And by the way, all of God's gifts are irrevocable. Once they are given, he doesn't take them back. Otherwise, it's not a gift. It's a loan. And so he says in verse 42, receive your sight. That's the first gift, healing. The second gift that he comments on, your faith has saved you. We are saved by grace, a gift, in this case specific, a charisma, a gift of grace. That's how the scriptures refer to it often. A gift of grace or a spiritual gift through faith. This also is a gift from God. Not anything that we can work toward or receive, but a free gift to those who call out to him. And so what we see here is the beginning of the various gifts that God gives through Christ that eventually through the Holy Spirit, once Christ is ascended, is administered by his spirit through our lives as we are ambassadors for Christ, as Jesus says in the Gospel of John. I, if anyone believe, has faith in me, he will do what I have been doing. Now, faith in this context is not determined by a doctrine. It's not what he believes. That There's a time and a place for that. But who he believes, we tend to focus, because we're more cerebral, in the what. What do Baptists believe? What do Mormons believe? What do Lutherans believe? What do Catholics believe? But the ultimate important foundational question is not first what, but who. And in this case, it's Christ. It is Christ and only Christ that is our channel to grace. You cannot get God's grace in any other way but through him. It is administered by his spirit and comes by way or the means of faith. So whatever faith you have is the beginning of, of experiencing the many gifts that God has for us. And this example that we read today is one powerful example of the gift of God, in this case, the healing that comes to a blind man and reveals God's grace through Christ. We all have access to this grace. As it says, therefore, let us go before the throne of grace. So my friends in Christ, as we go through our day today, may we in gratitude and confidence ask our heavenly father for greater gifts. As Paul says, ask and seek the greater gifts. It's not that it's not being presumptuous. 
It's understanding the fullness of God's love and his grace that he bestows upon his people. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Next time we go into the word, we will be going into chapter 19. Until then, may the peace of God be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.